Hello everyone, my name is Alicia and I am coming to you live from Chardon, Ohio, the home of the Chardon Sign Shack. I am the ambassador for the Stencil Smith, which is this absolutely wonderful stencil company. Um, if you've been using them for years, you know how great they are. If you're new to them, you're finding out how great they are. And if you haven't used them, you need to. If you like stenciling and you like painting, they are just absolutely amazing. My apron's coming untied. So as you're hopping on, say hello. Hi Maggie, how are you? I hope your daughter's doing well. I'm going to try and switch. You know what? I don't know if I turn my... Uh, whoop. Hold on a minute. <laughs> I got picture. I'm snapping. Let me make sure my... There we go. I didn't have my volume all the way up. Okay. Sorry about that. So I'm going to switch over to my comments down here on my secondary device and then uh, swipe them. I'm glad, Maggie. That's great. Hi, Kim. I bet she is. Surgery is no joking matter. So as you're hopping on, as I said, say hello. Say hello to April as you're hopping on. She's the owner. Hi, April of the Stencil Smith. Hi, Vicki. And uh, today we're going to be doing, we had a vote. If you're not a member of the Paint and Share page, you really should join. Um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. My list is like this long now um, because there's so many, there's thousands of stencils and you can't possibly uh, have seen them all. <laughs> Hi, Kate. How are you? Hi, Janice. Janice says, hello, April. Um, but anyhow, you see what everybody's doing and their take on their version or there's a stencil maybe you haven't even seen and you just can't believe it. Hi, Sandy, how are you? From Port El Elgin? I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but anyhow, today we took a vote. Last week, people talked about wanting to see a gnome, so April had this beautiful new gnome that she just released, and it is right back. I'm sorry, this is like a mirror image, so everything's the opposite. But um, right here, this is gonna be stencil number 8769 that we're doing today. It's the gnome stencil. It is on sale today and tomorrow for 20% off. And if you use my code, SignShack, S-I-G-N-S-H-A-C-K, you save an additional 15%. Now maybe you have the gnome. If you want, get another size. I think I'm gonna try a smaller one. I always get the extra large. The one I'm using today is an extra large. But I have these big door tags. I think they're like 18 inches and I think the smallest gnome would possibly fit on it. Hi, Cindy, how are you? So, um, so I think I'm gonna try one of the smaller ones too, but it's a good opportunity. Um, anytime we're having a live and if you already have that stencil and uh, you, could get another size in that stencil as well. Hi, Judy, how are you? You're in the kitchen cooking, yum. I've got my dinner in the slow cooker, I'm so happy. Um, Jeff even helped me this morning. So anyhow, we're doing the gnome and it's the new one that April released. And as you're hopping on, if you haven't done it, if you wouldn't mind doing this, please sprinkle me out there, I appreciate it. Um, as you share me around, it gets the word out about my page, the Chardon Sign Shack, and also April's page, the Stencil Smith. Yes, what are you cooking, Judy? I have beef stew. Not that exciting, but at least it's gonna be done when I'm done. Hi, Carol, how are you? So we're gonna be doing, now I've had a lot of questions. A lot of people have done a whole bunch of gnomes, um, but the gnomes are in, they have overlays, so. This one will take a little bit of time. Um, thank you, Cindy, I appreciate it so much. So this is gonna be like the base right here, the pot, and I'll go through everything as I do it. So this is like number one we're gonna do, or I call it like the base one. And then this is overlay number two. Oh, no, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I gotta go to overlay one. I always get mussed up. Okay, so this is overlay number one. So this will be the one you do the next, okay? And then this is gonna be overlay number two. Ooh, meatloaf, that sounds good. 
Meatloaf sounds yummy. I love meatloaf. Hi, Jarita. And then this is going to be overlay number three. And if you'll notice on your stencils, they're even, even though this sticker will come out with, off when you wash it, it's labeled. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it's labeled right there, number three. So they're always on there. Yes, comfort food is good. Okay, so I'm going to put my um, overlays back here in order. And I even had to write a list because there are so many colors on this gnome that's going to be going on. And I'm going to be using a couple extra stencils. These are not on sale today. Um, I went back and forth on what I was going to do. This is going to be one of them. This is number 8099. It's a medium. This floral here. I think this is beautiful. I've been waiting to use this on something, and it came to me this afternoon. Trust me, when I when I told um, I told Joni I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I meant I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Hi, Sherry. How are you? Sherry's already done one of these gnomes, so she's an expert. Um, and then I'm going to add, I think, a little flower or something from these butterflies. I used this, I think, in my last uh, live on my Easter eggs. So I'm going to set all these to the side. And we're gonna get started with my first layer. Well, this is actually my base layer. So let me get these all to the side here in order. So when I grab them, they'll be in order. And, whoops. Hold on. I'm having issues here. Okay, let's just set those there. Okay, so I am going to start with this first layer and I'm gonna angle you down. Now, I've already prepared my board. I did a gnome a long time, well, it wasn't a long time ago, but it was a Christmas gnome. It was probably in November or something like that. And if you would like a link, I can send you a link. Hi, hi Tammy, how are you? Um, and I went over how to do this framed border look. If you haven't, Okay, Pat, well, this is gonna be perfect. And not only that, this is gonna be on my page forever. And then I also have a YouTube channel that I'm slowly uploading all my videos to. So you can go back and watch this. If you do one, you could, you could you know, watch the video bit by bit and do it that way too. But all the gnomes are pretty much the same. They have these overlays and they're just like a puzzle. So anyhow, this board, what I did with this board was I, used this avocado in deco art and I used it as a stain. So what I did was I took a wet wipe. Hi Linda, how are you? So I took a wet wipe, one of these uh, Clorox wet wipes and I just put a little bit of um, paint in my plate, got my wet wipe, dipped it and just went around and stained it. So you can use paint as a stain. If you've never done that, I'm sure many of you know, but some people don't. Any color paint you have, you can use as a stain as long as you wet it. And then after that dried, I used painter's tape and I taped off the edges and I painted the inside with two coats of white. So this is what I have going on here. I think it's like a real nice kind of spring, uh, spring green. And then I sanded it back. Number one, I sanded it back to give the edges kind of an age. You gave up looking for a stencil tatty stencil mama. <laughs> April's our stencil mama. I love that. Alicia's my <laughs> stencil pimp. Oh my. <laughs> I'm out here. Oh boy. Okay. That's funny. You crack me up, Sherry. Um, so yeah, so you can use your paint as a stain. Now when you do use your paint as a stain, when you use water on your board, it does raise the wood a little bit. So I took my little block. I wanted to weather it a little bit anyhow, but I took my little uh, sanding block I have here and I just sanded it back a little bit. But it's real simple to make this painted border. If you cannot find my video under videos on my page, um, message me. I may not see your comments, but definitely message me and I'll send you a link to that video and it shows you how to do this border. It's really easy and it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, so we're gonna start with this first 
this first part of the um, stencil, which is like the base one, I like to say. And I wanna make sure my words are centered on this because this is something I did with my Christmas one. I wasn't paying attention when I made this framed. I don't know if you can see this down here. And my Christmas one, it's for me, so it's not a big deal, but my Christmas, if you can see that, like the letter was over the edge and I didn't like that. So if you're using this framed look, you definitely want to make sure that it's within your border. Get that all lined up. I want to make sure my sun's in the border and it's pierced straight to me. It's easier, too, to get things lined up overhead if you're standing over top of something rather than sitting on something. Or sitting down because you're at an eye level rather than being above it. I'm excited. Uh, Jeff went um, to the store, which if you don't know, my husband's name is Jeff. And he got me higher wheels for my table. And they're wheels that, yes, you can tape the two pieces together. Um, I just have them butted up to each other. So I had to write, see, this is my little notebook here. I made a note and I lined my paints up according to like the, the, the way I'm going to use them. And I do like to make notes when I'm doing something like this just because I can go back and say, oh, I use that color or this color because my memory is um, not what it should be. And this is a 1 by 12 board that I have cut 39 inches long. Oh, I bet that looks good. Sherry has her gnomes hanging. <laughs> I'm so organized. I may look organized, April, but you should see the chaos around me. My husband would disagree, especially if he's watching this. He's probably laughing at your comment. So I'm going to start with, I'm using some Deco Art paints, a couple, one Folk Art, and some Fusion Mineral paint. Use what you have. Um, Water-based acrylic is the best. I really like Fusion Mineral paints. Um, it's what I use mostly, but I do have some other paints that I use as well, and Fusion Mineral doesn't have a lot of the colors that other ones have. So I'm going to use this pretty, um, it's called Prairie Sunset. I'm going to use this for the sun, and this is going to be a lot of brushes here. I did bring a couple sponges out, April, for like the butterflies and stuff, so I'm going to attempt it again. April gave me some tips. Um, if you watched me last week, I tried the sponge experience and I was not a fan, but I think this is a real pretty um, yellow for the sun. It's called Prairie Sunset Fusion Mineral. And if you're new to stenciling also, you want to get your brush, you want to dip it in the paint, then you want to offload. I use shop towels because you can use them for a very long time. Um, I've used this quite a bit. <laughs> so I'm going to get my brush. And the first time you do do this, it is a little dry, um, more so, I hope it's not wiggling too much. That's the one thing I have. I'm going to move this board down a little bit, if you girls don't mind, and I'll move it up as I do it. And the first time you do use your brush, it's way drier than it would be. Yeah, these are really nice brushes. Maggie, I got these brushes on um, Amazon. They have them on Amazon. And I'm just swirling around here. The key to not having bleeds is to offload your paint. Less is more. And I just want to take a peek. I'm going to want that a little bit darker, so I'm going to do a quick little dry here. Yeah, they're Royal and um, Royal and Lang Nickel, I think is what they're called. I have mostly 5 8 brushes because that's what I like to use for the most part. I do love my Fusion, or not my Fusion, my um, Klingon brush. That's one of my favorites. So I'm just going to give it a quick little dry. And you'll find when you're stenciling, 
that it is um, it is mostly dry because you're putting down such a thin layer of paint. So again, I'm gonna go around. Just like that, add one more layer. Take a peek, you can always lift it up. And I think that's dark enough, that's what I want. So I believe, I believe that's all I'm using that for. The, let me just double check my list here. Because if it is, yeah it is. I'm gonna put that in, the, in my water. So have a jar of water handy to put your brushes in. And if you're gonna use your brushes again, I keep a baggie with a wet wipe in it because you wanna keep your brushes uh, sealed up and you wanna keep them a little bit damp so they don't, um, so they don't dry out. Good afternoon, Linda. It's nice and sunny here too, Pamela. Believe it or not. So I'm gonna go on to the butterflies and I'm gonna attempt to use sponges on this one. And I'm going to use this, uh, let's see, this is light lavender folk art. It's a multi-surface, but it's, uh, I think it's for everything. Now, April told me use the wide part of the sponge and don't cut them like I did last time and then offload. So I believe I'm going to do this one in lavender. So when I have a couple little things like this, I think I'm gonna start using sponges. I'm still not a fan of the sponge, but it's better than um, doing those brushes. Like, you know, I'm gonna have, like I have this, I think it's like this many brushes out that I'm gonna be using. So that's a lot of cleanup. And I hate cleanup, I really do. I'm sure you do too. That's like the worst part of stenciling is the cleanup. So this is a lavender I'm using. And I think I'm gonna do, there's tulips in them. So I'm gonna do the tulips in um, either lavender or the pink that I'm using. Maybe you girls can vote, what would you like? Pat, I like the 10 mil better. You love the seven, okay, so it's just up to you. I think it's a personal thing. Um, Maybe if I had started with the blue ones with the seven mil, I might like 10 or more brushes. Oh, that's horrible. So I think it's just a personal thing. I think sometimes when you start with something, you really tend to gravitate that way because it's what you're used to too. So I say use whatever you want to use, whatever you like. I'm going to take a little peek at that one. Whoop, I didn't mean to pull the whole thing off. See, I'm still not a fan of the, um, you can always line it right back up real quickly. I'm not a huge fan of the sponges, but I'm gonna get just a little bit more. Perhaps if I put it on my plate, I'd have more success. Okay, just get a little bit. But I thought this was a real pretty lavender, kind of spring looking. And you can always go back later and you could add a little detail to your butterfly if you want. A little black down the middle, maybe some black going out the edges or maybe like use alternating colors. Um, like I'm gonna do this in pink. You could do little pink in the wings, something like that. So I'm gonna set my, uh, my lavender sponge in there because I am gonna use that again. Hi, Kathy, how are you? Okay, so I'm gonna use this. It is called Petal Pink. Oh, let's see, okay, there we go. I apologize for doing that all the time, but this, um, if you've never done a live, it's always the opposite. You're going the right way, but it's the opposite. It's, the, uh, it's your mirror image or whatever. It's really, it's, unless you've done one, it's difficult to explain, but it's a pain. So I'm getting some pink on that sponge and I'm offloading it. 
And I'm just going to get this little butterfly down here, who's in pink. I thought those were two pretty spring colors. And I'm going to give that a quick little dry there. And I don't have like a specific pot color. Um, and so I was looking. So if you don't have a certain color, it's easy if you just Google it to make a certain color. So I don't have um, like a terracotta color. And I don't know if it was Sherry. Somebody had their this particular gnome on um, the paint and share page yesterday. And I think they, I forget what they said the name of the paint. It might have been Sherry. Um, yes, Petal Pink is really cute. It's a, it's a pretty name for a color, for a pink color. Okay, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this orange. So I have pure orange here. And it's folk arc, folk art. I think I said arc. I did not mean to. And I'm going to put a little bit on my plate. And I don't want this pot to be orange. I want it to be a terracotta. So I am going to be using some coal, which this is fusion mineral coal. So I'm going to put a little bit. So this is my new like camera holder I'm trying out. I don't know if you can tell any difference but I hope the angle's good and everything. I didn't need that much. So what you're gonna do is I have one of these little palette knives or palette, I think that's what they're called, palette knives, and it's just plastic. I got it, I think, at Hobby Lobby. And I'm just gonna take a dab, just a little dab of this black, and I'm gonna put it in the orange and mix it up. and get kind of a terracotta color. And I might add just a little bit more orange to that. Just play with it till you get the color you're looking for. Just gonna add a little bit more, but it's a good way, you know, like I said, you can find anything on the internet. So I'm like, what paints? And there were different, all kinds of different formulas to get it, but to me, this seemed like the easiest one. So hopefully this will be enough paint. I don't know. I'm going to need some more. And I put that black so close. Let me add some more orange. Because that's a big pot. I shouldn't have put that black so close to it. Huh? And just mix it up there. And you can make a real... I think I'm going to add just a little bit more, but it's a good way. If you don't have that color, like I was thinking, oh, should I run up to Walmart and look for that color? And I'm like, no, nope. I was there. I was there yesterday. They had a lot of stuff on clearance yesterday. I found a bunch of winter hats for a dollar. So see, that's kind of like a terracotta looking color. You know, it's not so orange. You could add just maybe a Pitch more black in it. I have to keep pushing this aside. My black's running. I need to get my other palette knife here and move that. This is what I'm going to have to do. This is the set I had. I've had that for a while, and I use it every once in a while. It's easier, I found, when you're mixing colors. Let me move this black over here. I put that way, way too close. That way I'm not going to worry about it too much. Put that right there. So does anybody else do that? Mix paint colors to get the color you need? Okay, so I'm going to get my brush, and I'm going to get some of that paint off of there, and dip it in the orange, and offload. 
You mix colors all the time, Deb. It's a great way if you don't have a specific color. And just start swirling that around my pot. The only thing about mixing them is you kind of want to mix as much as you need because you may not get the same exact shade the next time. So this is going to be the little pot on top of his head. And I might go back and shade it a little later. I can't remember if it was Sherry. Somebody shaded it on the paint and share and it looks so pretty. You like to mix colors too, Tammy and Jarita? Okay, I'm gonna give that a quick little dry. And I'll go back over it again. And you could even lift it up. So you're starting to see the shape of the gnome, the shape of the pot. Like I said, it's like a puzzle. Um, I can't remember who. Oh, you get to leave work early. That's awesome, Cindy. Have a great day. Enjoy your day. It's always nice to leave work early. And I'm going to do a second layer here. That's another thing, too. When I'm watching it on the camera, I'm looking at comments. Everything's kind of on a delay, so <laughs> it can get confusing sometimes. Does that look like a pot color, or is it not quite... Is it still too orangey? I'm not sure. I bought a couple pots at the Dollar Tree the other day. I want to get those plant sayings that April has and put on them and give them to my daughter for Mother's Day. I think that would be with some little maybe herbs or something in it. And if you haven't seen all the new releases she has oh my goodness <laughs> my cart just keeps getting bigger and bigger i looked this morning i can't even remember there was a i think it was a cow one i can't remember what did it say april there's some it was really cute it just cracked me up when i saw it okay i'm liking that and i might leave this a little variegated looking a little swirly looking to give it a little dimension. What do you think? Do you girls like that or do you want it more solid? Hi, Nina. How are you? Yeah, the new ones are awesome. I know they're awesome. April, I think she, I don't think she ever sleeps and I think she admitted to it the other night. So th yeah, this is the extra large and this is a 39 I've got it on a 39 inch board. You wouldn't need it as big, but I like to frame mine out. Happy mail, yeah, I love my happy mail. You like it? Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like that then. I'm gonna leave it a little swirly. And it, to me, it looks, sometimes when you don't make it such a solid color, it looks, uh, right, it looks weathered, just like Mary Jo said. Um, it looks a little, um, it lo looks a little more natural. You're part vampire. <laughs> now that's funny. Okay, and I am going to use the terracotta again because I'm going to use that for the bird's nose. I do know that. So I'm putting my brushes in a bag to keep them nice and uh, damp. Okay, so I am going to, let's see, do the legs next. And the legs, I love this green. I'm going to do the base layer in this citron green. It goes really pretty. I was playing with my greens yesterday. And I did a bunch of like samples and stuff. It goes really pretty with this avocado. So the stripes will be avocado, but I'm gonna use this citron green. Get a little bit out there and get another stencil brush. And of course, dip the brush and offload. This is a real fun 
fun, fun green. It looks really pretty with blues, too, this green. Um, it looks really pretty. It's kind of like a very bright neon. Remember the neon colors of the 80s? With some yellow in it. It's just really pretty, I think. Very spring looking. So I'm swirling that in there. And I am going to give his legs a little dry. And if you dry on your stencil, just make sure to move your heat gun back and forth. Okay? So this is going to be the first part of your puzzle. Now I did not, do, sometimes I do things ahead of time to make sure they work. Um, you know, like color wise. So I'm just hoping this flows and goes. We'll see. In my, in my head, it kind of did. I did a lot of color squat swatches and then I swapped some stuff out and stuff, but, um, I think it's going to be pretty. So I'm doing a second coat of this citron green. And again, like I said, something like this where you're using so many colors. So say you make it and somebody wants to buy it. Like I made the um, the hydrangea, the welcome sign uh, two weeks ago. And I have a lady right away who said she wanted to purchase it. So, I mean, that's easy. I know that was only two colors, well, three colors. But something like this, if somebody wants, you know, say you make one and a couple people want it, you would want to... Um, Maybe keep track of the colors you're using, unless you have that good of a memory. I, friends, do not. Not at all. So I think that's, I'm gonna take a peek here. I like that. And I don't think I'm using the citron green again. Let me just go down my list here. Coal, terracotta coal, cathedral taupe, lavender, coal. Nope, so I'm gonna put that in the water. We're done with that one. So now I'm gonna go down to the tulip um, stems and the grass down here, and I'm gonna use avocado on that, which is what I used on the outsides that I sanded back for a little bit of a weathered look. And I'm gonna get another stencil brush here. And got my paint. And again, I'm gonna offload. And let's see if this is in the, yeah, it should be in the picture. And I'm just swirling that in the stems of the tulips. My daffodils have been coming up for a couple weeks because it's been so nice here in northeastern Ohio, which is really weird. Um, yes, the, uh, the numbering of the pieces helps tremendously. And like I said, if your stickers fall off, they are numbered on the piece. They're embossed on it. Sometimes I can't find it right away, but I just take my fingers and I feel around the edges and you'll eventually feel it. But it's nice, it'll tell you, you know, number three or, you know, whatever, number two. Okay. And I'm gonna give these a quick little dry. And like I said, just move your dryer around if you're drying on top of it. Because you don't want to, this mylar is really, really sturdy. But you don't want to um, warp it. And these heat guns can get really hot. This one in particular I got for torch paste because my old heat gun wouldn't torch it. And this silver part here gets really hot. Really, really hot. So if you were joining late, um, I go live every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I am the ambassador for the Stencil Smith. My name is Alicia of the Chardon Sign Shack, and every Tuesday, April has a stencil or sometimes a couple stencils that are 20% off, and with my code Sign Shack, S-I-G-N-S-H-A-C-K, it is an additional 15% off those stencils and then anything else you order at any time you can get 15% off when you order. Okay, so I've got my tulips. They look good. And I'm gonna put my brush. And I look at all these colors, it's funny. 
I'm just looking at them in the, um, the secondary device there. Yeah, the end gets really hot. You reuse brush with paint without washing. Oh, you offload it and use a different, different color. That doesn't affect the color at all, Linda. Is that Linda who said that? Okay, so I'm going to be doing down here at the very bottom, I'm doing bloom where you planted. I think you can see it right there. And I'm going to be doing that in the coal black. And let's see, I'll use, I don't know which brush. i got so many here, so I'm going to use this brush. Oh, do I already have a black brush? No, I don't. Okay. I'd hate to dirty another brush and not need to. So I've got my black paint. I've offloaded. And I'm doing the bloom where you planted. I like to do my words in either blacks and whites. Um, sometimes a really dark gray. But then sometimes a pop of color would be really pretty for your words too. That's just the way I tend to do things. You do what makes you happy or what makes your customer happy if you sell your work. How many out, you out there sell your work? Not if it's dark, it doesn't make a difference. So I'm just offloading my brush. Yeah, gnomes are very popular. And I'm swirling the letters in there. It's bloom where you are planted, which I think is just a beautiful saying. And I also close my bridges. I might show that a little bit at the end if we have time. I know this gnome is gonna take a while. I was looking at my last one that I did I don't want to scare you, but it took a long time. But I did show you how to do the painted border, so I think that's part of why it took so long. And I tend to talk a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get nervous with dead air time. Yes, they are, Jarita. They are sturdy enough to clean and reuse. I just like the hazy white. You're doing four to five craft shows this year, Pamela? You have one coming up in May, correct? Pamela, I have never done a craft show. I do mostly custom orders and it keeps me real steady busy, as busy as I need to be. I'm actually too busy sometimes. Um, but, um, I know a lot of you girls out there, some of you do booths, which I've never done a booth. I've thought about it. I started out selling my stuff. I thought, how could I pay for my stencil habit? habit? And I started out selling my stuff on uh, Marketplace. And I sold a lot on Marketplace. And then I gradually made a business page. And um, then I started doing lives and... Um, I, I, you know, if you, you keep the key to like, if you start a business page, I'll give you a little um, tip here, which I didn't know is post every day and interact. It, um, it's something about the Facebook algorithm. Just like now, if you're on watching this live, <coughs> excuse me, anytime you give hearts, anytime you, um, you know, make a comment, it, um, it shows Facebook that you're enjoying it, and then they send it out into, I don't know, internet land. I don't know what you want to call it again. So, so that's one thing that gets your, I guess they call it your algorithm up. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff I can't figure out. I'm just not that tech savvy. Marketplace is horrible now, Mary. I didn't know that. So right before Mother's Day is your first show. Well, that's coming up pretty soon, Pamela. I can hardly believe, I don't know how many days it is till spring, but it's pretty soon. It doesn't feel like, it felt like spring here in February in Ohio, but now it's feeling back like winter again. It was sunny today, but it's cold. Okay, so that's exactly the darkness I wanted it. 
So I'm going to pull this stencil off. Goodness. So this is our base layer we've got done. So see how we're coming along? We're starting to paint like a little picture. Like I said, it's like a puzzle. So now we're going to do... Let me make sure I'm on the right... So this is overlay one. And like I said, if the stickers come off, which they will, if you can see that right there, I don't know if you can or not, but it's embossed and it says overlay one. So what you're going to want to do with this is this is going to be his beard and his boots and the little ladybugs. And so you want to see her, the hat, the, the um, tip of his hat's here. So what you're going to want to do is you want to line that up. And of course you want his boots to be kind of centered in his legs. And I think that looks really good right there. And if you butt it up to here, it should butt up to your little legs here, which I love their skinny little legs. Um, if you ever have an instance where it doesn't, if there's kind of a gap, if it bothers you, you just fill it in with a liner brush with, with whichever color you would like. So I'm gonna tape it down. I don't use adhesive. I don't like adhesive. Well, I shouldn't say I don't like adhesive. I've never used adhesive. Okay, so I should clarify that. Shouldn't say I didn't, don't like it. Um, okay, so we're gonna do red, red boots, and we're gonna do a brown beard. Um, I was gonna do like a gray shaded beard, but I decided against that. So we'll start with the red. So I'm gonna use Fort York Red. It's such a cute little, hi Dominica. Let's see if I can get the, I had the lid off it earlier. Sometimes these bottles are really hard to open, these FIFO bottles. Okay, so I got this real pretty red here for the ladybugs. And again, I'm gonna get a brush. I think I'm gonna get a little, this one here. And I'm gonna get that red on my bristles, just like that. And I'm gonna offload onto my paper towel. And these are gonna be the bodies of the ladybug. So I'm gonna make those red. And you know, if you mess up, you can always go back and paint over it. Yeah, I thought it was a real pretty uh, ladybug color, this Fort York Red. I like this, and I like the blue that I'm going to use. These are Fusion Minerals. Um, I like, these are really good. This is a really good Christmas red. This is a really good, uh, it's just a really good all-around red. It's really nice for the 4th of July, this, and I'll be using the Liberty Blue later. Um, this Fort York Red and Liberty Blue go really nice together for any of your um, Independence Day stuff. So down here, I'm going to do these boots in reds because they're going to be just like the ladybugs. They're going to be um, red with little po black polka dots. I love I love the boots. They remind me the like those little UGG boots. They're so cute. The winter one I have. This guy here, he has. He has like fur on the top, like the real, uh, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Like the little Uggs. I think it's just, it's so, I love these gnomes. <laughs> I want them all. I want them. Um, I'm, like I said, I think I'm going to order um, the smallest size they have and try that on a door tag because I was looking. So when you're looking at the, people get confused sometimes because they do email me a lot. And they get confused by what size would fit. But always look at the image size. It'll tell you the stencil size, which would be the size of the stencil. But the image size would be the size of, like, the image. So, like, the size of this. That would be the size. So, I'm going back here and doing the red again. And doing some more red. A second layer. And I'm going to go down here and do these boots. I didn't dry in between, but it's pretty dry. And I usually uh, take my fingers and kind of hold it between, uh, you know, where I'm stenciling lots of times. 
Even though it's taped down, it just gives it a little bit of added security. Yeah, I had this going a million different ways in my head. So I was, in my head, I was thinking maybe doing this top half, like about to the, to the grass here in like a blue sky and then the bottom half in green um, and grass. I don't know. I ha Do you do that when you create, like you have a bunch of different ideas? Oh, I think you'll really like it, Pat. I really do. Like I said, and another thing, if you don't know, you can go to this video when it's over, and I think it's like the three dots that are in the corner of the video, and you could put, save this video, and you can save it to a playlist. So like I have some I might say, like save, um, you know, if you wanted to save me, you could say save Shard and Sign Shack, and then you would go and you would know that my videos would be there. Or you might be, um, might be something like, learning to paint like a Highland cow or resin art or something like that, you can make a playlist for that. So if you're not aware of that, that's also an option. I do that a lot so I can go back and watch people's videos. And all you do is just save it and then make, you know, name the playlist. Okay, I think these are going to be dark enough, but I just want to pop it off here and take a peek. Yeah, I like that. And I'm liking the ladybugs, I think. Okay, let's see. Do I have to do red again? Let me just check my list here, Fort York Red. No, nope. okay, I can put that one in the water and seal that up. And then we're going to do the beard, which I'm going to do in this brown. Like I said, I was going to do a gray, but I decided not to. So this is... I'll. I know, I think April was born or lived somewhere, Algon, Algonquin. Um, it's a real pretty brown, if I can get it open. I thought I had it opened earlier. No, gnomes just keep on going. You messed up your bunny round? Don't know why, but the paint was lifting. Oh, maybe that's, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry about that, Dominica. See, Judy has a file with just my lives. See, you can make a playlist. So this is the brown I'm gonna use. It's a lighter brown for his beard. I don't want it to be really super dark. Um, I'm gonna use this brush right here. And I am going to get my paint on my brush. Huh. Mary Jo, you can on the one. She has one that has interchangeable parts. <coughs> Excuse me, I got to get a drink. But um, these ones, I think there's too many um, different like overlays that you have to have each one. So I think that's kind of a pretty brown. It's not super dark. And I'm going to go over his legs there. Kind of youthful. Since we're doing spring. I'm just swirling. That's my favorite way to do it. If you've watched me before, I've told you I started out pouncing. I was a, I, I thought that's how you stenciled. And I didn't know anything about offloading or anything like that. So the more videos you watch, the more you learn. I'm just swirling that in there. And I think I'm going to leave that a little variegated just because I want it to look, I think it looks a little more natural. 
with the white spots behind it. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this off and I don't think I'm using this brown again. Let me see. I don't really wanna put my lid on my paint. I always do stuff like that and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? I haven't spilt anything on it yet. So see, he's coming along. He's just like a little puzzle. He's coming together. He's vibrant. He's spring looking. Okay, so that was overlay one. So now we're already on to overlay two. Okay, so this is overlay two. And you can almost tell when you look at it, you know, these are his little stripes, his little can. This is gonna be the seam on the pot and the little bluebird. So you just wanna kinda, see I've got it here, you wanna slide it up where the bluebird's just right on top of his head. And see how it lines up so wonderfully, just like that. And I am gonna find my tape. Yep, there it is. Huh, I'm looking for it and it's on my board. And I do recommend taping your stuff down so it doesn't move around. Don't need adhesive or anything. And you don't need a huge amount of tape, just enough to position it in, um, in place. Okay, so. I think I'll grab my black one real quick and I'm going to do this little seam right here. Get my coal on my brush and offload it. And that's where that seam on the pot's going to be. And sometimes the hardest part about this is not the overlays but figuring out the colors. And I hope all these colors do look good together. I don't know until the end. Okay, so I'm gonna do the blue bird and I'm gonna do the blue bird in this Liberty Blue from Fusion Mineral. And I'm just gonna get another brush here. And again, get the paint on my brush and we're gonna offload just like that. It's a pretty blue, little blue bird. And you could go into a lot of detail too on the bird. You know, adding some feathers with like a liner brush, little lines on it, little tufts out of his head, that kind of thing. I'm gonna give it a quick dry here. But this has me thinking about spring. We've started here. Yeah, the extra large. Oh, you did a red beard. I love that. I thought about leaving the white beard with, um, like I said, with the... Uh, with just touches of gray in it, but I decided to go, at the last minute I decided to go for the brown. But we'll see. <laughs> this is for me, I'm not that worried about it. And like I said, this is a lot of colors on this, this one. Some of them you just have, you know, three, four colors, but this is a lot, maybe five. Okay, and I think I'm gonna leave the bird just like that. And if you leave it not so solid, a little variegated looking, it looks a little more dimensional, it looks a little more real, I think, on anything that you do. Okay, so the pan I'm gonna do, am I gonna use the blue again? Got my list here, I'm checking. I don't think so. Eh, I might hold that one, I might, because I might go. No, that's gonna be good. 
Okay, so this blue, I think this is really pretty. I have a blue infusion that's really pretty, but I, it's called Azure, but I decided to go with this one in Deco Art. It's called Sea Breeze. And I, there we go. It's really pretty. Really pretty and bright. Um, bright little color. I'm gonna put that over here. And I'm gonna get my bristles in that too. Just like that. And I'm gonna offload. So see all the colors we already have on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven colors already. And I'm just coloring this little pot in. Meatloaf, sausage cooked, mashed potatoes, cream corn, ooh, and lima beans. That sounds good to me. If you were close, Judy, I'd be banging on your door for supper. I know we were talking about this last, la I think it was last week, like, who knew when you grew up that that would be the hardest thing, like, you'd have to think of something to make every day. You know, it's just, well, it's, my dad lives with me, so it's me and my husband and my dad. My dad is not a fan of mostly anything I cook, mainly because he wants uh, pinto beans or biscuits and gravy. He wants all Southern cooking, and um, I do occasionally treat him to that, but we don't eat like that. But it, we have a lot of leftovers. Last night I made some wild rice and chicken soup, um, homemade, in the Instapot. And boy, did it come out good. It was really, really good and really creamy. It was very good. So I'm just getting this Sea Breeze. I think that's what it's called, Sea Breeze and Deco Arts on this again. I like that color. Do you like that? I think it's really bright and pretty. So we're gonna go from the sea breeze. Mm, that's the last time we're using that. Huh. Lasagna, ooh, I love lasagna. Raymond and, yeah, Raymond and grilled cheese. I know lots of times my husband will just get like the, uh, Walmart, I think it's Walmart, has like the Marketplace chicken noodle soup, and it's pretty good. And we'll get that, and we'll get, um, we'll get that, and we'll just make grilled cheese. It's like, let's call it a night. Because it does, it gets tiring. It's exhausting, I think. So his legs, I'm going to put the avocado green on his stripes. So I already have a brush in here somewhere in avocado. I just have to find it. Nope. Yep. Yes, I had to look in better light there and see. That's definitely the brush. And I'm offloading and I'm just gonna do the stripes here in avocado. And see, this really isn't taking that long. Yeah, I love the teal. I'm a big fan of teals. Blue is my favorite color, so really any shade of blue. And then green's my second favorite color. But blue's definitely my favorite. And I'm just getting his little stripes there. And then voila, we're done with the second overlay. And we only have one more to go. Ooh, I'm not sure I like his beard. I don't know, we'll see. Okay. 
I'm not sure I like the color of his beard. I'm not saying that I don't like his beard. But that's a, you know, you can always change that if you don't like it. Okay, so we are going to do overlay three. And again, it's the same kind of thing. So we're almost done with the whole puzzle. So that really wasn't that hard. Um, you just match it up like this is the little birdie's face. So you can see about where the birdie's face want to go. These are the dots and the head of the ladybugs. And his nose is going to go there in his hands. And then the dots and the tulips. Um, one thing I am going to do is before I start anything, I'm going to get some casement. And anytime, because this is going to be a flesh color here, this is a little tip. Flush is such a light color. I'm going to go over it with a little bit of this casement, which is the white that I use for the board. And let me use this brush. And I'm going to stencil over the where the nose and the hands are just to make it like a solid color because it's two different colors and you don't want to have part of his hand like darker than the other um because i've had that happen it can look really weird it doesn't look right if that makes any sense so i'm adding his nose he's not going to have a white nose and white hands but that's just like a base color just so it looks um natural i don't know if that makes sense or not If you fill in, you sure can. You can connect all the bridges with a really nice liner brush. Okay, so I'm gonna do his eyes. So I'm gonna get my black one out of here. Let's see which one's my black one. That's avocado, that's black. And I'm keeping them in a baggie with a wet wipe so they don't dry out. So I'm gonna get my piece of flashing right here because the nose is so close. And that way I don't have to grab my tape and I'm just gonna pop that over his nose. And get some of the black, this fusion mineral coal. Just pop over the nose. And then feel the eyeballs in with the black. And I think one coat's probably going to be enough. I might do one more coat. But I hope that made sense about the, the hands and the nose. Okay, so I'm going to go down here. The ladybug dots are going to be black and the head's going to be black. And I'm offloading. And while that's drying, I'm going to go down here to his boots. His little polka dot boots. And I'm just swirling in there. Okay, so we got his boots, and I'm going to just do a quick little dry here. And I'm going to do one more coat, I think, especially on the heads. I don't want to forget his nose too. Okay, I might get the black. And I'm just gonna offload that some more. Do you all charge more? It seems to take. Um, I don't really charge more for these. No. 
you can. I mean, that's totally up to you. I don't know what anybody else does. To me, once you've done a couple of these, it's uh, it gets to be like second nature. The hardest part of it, like I said, is figuring out the colors that you want to go with. Um, like if I made this again, I'm not sure if I would go with a brown beard. I might go with like a white with just a little bit of gray around the edges kind of thing. Um, so the, figuring out the color combos can be the hardest part of it. But lots of times, too, April has hers already done up in color, so you can kind of go from that, too. So that helps a lot. So I am done with the black there, and I am going to do, let's see, I'm going to get these tulips. I had a sponge going for the tulips. I'm going to use the lavender down there, I think. Or no, is that pink? I'm going to use pink, I guess. I didn't know which one I saved. So get my pink on my tray. Yes, because you do not have to tape everything off. That's what's so great about this. So I'm offloading my sponge, just like you would your brush. And filling in the tulips. And I have to say, like for a couple little things, I think I, I'm liking the sponges. Um, like I probably could even use a sponge on the sun. I think I used a brush on that. But you could. And I know April told me, like, if you soak them in water quick enough, if you're not going to use them again, you can get the paint off, just like you would your brushes. Oh, I love tulips, too. I think they're so pretty. So I'm just going to give it one more little coat here. It does have kind of a smoother appearance, I have to say, the sponges. Okay, so that looks good, I think. We got a lot of different colors going here. Yeah, it's so much easier than taping off. I agree. Taping off, that's why I like that flashing, too. When you're doing something like that, you know, you want to just pop it over something real quick, and you don't have to wait, because tape is expensive, too, especially painter's tape. So for the, um, for the nose and the hands, I'm going to use this Cathedral Taupe for the flesh color. I had this open, I thought, maybe not. If your paint cans, if you have anything like this or anything, if you just thump them real good on something, it loosens the paint and it opens up. Okay, so I'm gonna get this Cathedral Taupe for like the flesh color. Again, I'm getting it on my brush, and I'm running out of room here, and I'm going to offload right there. And I'm going to get his nose and his hands. Give it a quick little dry and probably do one more coat. But when you put that base layer over the dark ones or the white, it looks a lot better. It, do, it doesn't have like a shaded look like there's dark in one because it would be uneven looking because I've done it before, if that makes sense. Oh, I'm glad you've learned a lot. Oh, you're working on your basket hydrangeas? I can't wait to see them, Sherry, but they're gonna be beautiful. Okay, Tammy, she said she just washes them out real good, just like she does her brushes, and if she forgets, she cuts them. Okay, so we got his hands, we got his dots. Do we have everything? Okay, we do. And we're at a little over an hour. That's not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to untape. Oh, no, I didn't get his nose. Did not get his nose. 
Oh, you made a growth chart with the peonies. I love, I haven't sent mine to my niche yet. I need to. I'm waiting on um, the bubble wrap to ship it because I have to ship it to Idaho. Let's see, I'm gonna do that in, what color am I using? The terracotta, okay, the like orangish. Okay, that's that brush. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of this uh, terracotta I made and offload. And I'm gonna cover up his eyes this time and just get his nose or his beak, I guess. What is the easy way of finding the hydrangea stencil on the site? Um, April, maybe you can put a link up for the hydrangea that we used last week. You could either just type in hydrangea if you wanted. Or I guess we didn't use it last week. We used it two weeks ago. And it was a really fun um, live And again, anything else you order, any time is always going to be 15% um, off. Someone is at the front door. Whoop, sorry about that. My ring went off. April, do you have a geranium stencil? I'm sure she does. I have so many floral stencils. I just love them all. Okay, so I'm going to pull the, let me make sure that's dark enough, the beak. Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to pull this off. And I'm really liking it. I'm not sure about the brown on his beard. I feel like I should have done that in the gray like I was originally planning. I would have been happier with it. Um, you can definitely... Fill in the bridges. Um, you could add a little bit. Uh, that's not my black one. You could add a little bit of black, you know, around the edges of your pot to add some dimension. I don't know if there's any color. Yeah, there's a color on that. I don't know what it is. Okay, so I'm going to add, I'm going to show you real quick here with this, uh, the teal. Someone was asking, like, just take a nice liner brush, and I may have to get some more. And I just kind of dab it off a little bit like this. And you can close that little bridge right there. And then there was a little stencil, just that simple. And I do the same thing for the letters down here. I do that with black. I'm going to put a little flower on his... Uh, on his... Um, let me see here. I used this stencil, I think, last week on the Easter eggs. So I'm going to put a little, it's got butterflies in, and you could even add some more of these butterflies on it if you wanted. You could also take your sponge in either color and lay your stencil back and dab a little bit of pink on this, a little bit of purple on that, just to give that some dimension. Let me get my lid back on there. Goodness, I don't want to get that all over. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on the border here, too. I was going to do something a little extra. I think I want to put this flower there. And I'm going to do this in the pink, I think. So I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to get a little bit of that petal pink on my sponge. And I'm just going to offload it again. And I'm going to put a little flower in the flower pot. I think that's cute, adding that little, just that little flower. You could do stuff like that all over, just different little touches. Like I said, I'm not sure about his beard. I may go back and do his beard in another color because I'm not sure I'm digging that, but we'll see. I don't know. What do you think about the beard? Do you like the beard color? I'm just not sure. 
Yeah, see, connecting the bridges on the watering can makes such a difference, and it's the same thing. Now, I want to show you the other stencil that I'm going to be using here in a minute, if you want to stick with me. But I'll show you real quick for anybody who's new and is asking about connecting the bridges. So this is my coal. I just take that, and I've got my uh, piece of paper here, and I just kind of offload it. Just I don't smush it, but I always like to get the excess paint off. And so, like, bloom, I just kind of go around it like that. And if you connect your bridges, it gives your piece such a better finished look. It doesn't look stenciled at all. It, it, it's beautiful, it just adds a lot to it. So you would just do that and just real, and the more you do it, the easier it is. Because when I first started connecting bridges, I was not that good. And I know April told me that one of her customers started doing it and she went around her house and she took every sign she had done over the years and she connected her bridges. Cause she said once that she, you know, saw it, she couldn't unsee it. It's, it's just, you can't, once you start connecting bridges, you cannot unsee it. That is for sure. You see it and you see all those bridges that need to be connected. And see, this isn't taking that long. Look at that, just that quickly. And I'll tell you what, too. The thing about April stencils is there's not a huge... She puts a lot of thought into her designs. And there's not a huge amount of bridges to connect. So just like that, easy peasy. we got the A. And the P. And then just two more here, and we have them all connected. And if you want to go back over it and do one more layer because it's a little too light, you can certainly do that. But just play with it. You'll get really good at it. It doesn't, it doesn't take long doing it a couple times, and you get a real feel for it, for doing it. And the B. Oh, thank you, Dominica. <laughs> Dominica's like, get the B. Yeah, I would have been bummed. Especially if I had cleaned up and put everything away. I would have been like, oh. That was a little too watered down. But it's that easy. And then I want to show you the border I'm going to do on this. Whether it's going to look good or not, I don't know. Like I said, I'm just, I think this is going to look really pretty. So I've got this green border here, and I've done this on other signs before. I haven't done it on a gnome, though. And there's so many different things that you can do, so many florals. So I've already got this border taped off, and I have this stencil, and it is number... The one that's on sale is number 8769. I don't, you probably can't see that. It's not in the camera anymore, but it's number 8769. It's an extra large. And that one's on sale 20% off. My code sign check. And then this one is number 8099, and it's a medium. See how pretty that is? So this was my thoughts. Like I said, I don't know if it's going to look good. I think it is, but I've done this on other signs. It might be such a busy sign that this may not look good I don't know but so this is a really pretty border so take your border and where's my white brush let me find my brushes I think that's it nope that's it and I think I'm gonna put the rest of them away because I don't need those so what I do is I'm gonna start kind of in the center anytime I'm doing any kind of a pattern I like to start in the center and I just line the edge of this up with the edge of this little gnome. And that's not quite center. I need to come up a little bit more. And the reason I like to kind of start in the center is because you hope to get the same pattern ending at the end as you do at the top. And I just tape that down there. And I'm not gonna do this really heavy. That's the white. 
Where's my white at? Down here. And you're, if you go into this white, it's okay because it's already white. But I'm just ever so lightly swirling this in the flowers. And there are a lot of floral patterns that you can do this with. I could have done it with the butterflies. I thought about that one. So just like that. And then you come up and it's almost dry. Thank you, Liz, I appreciate that. I don't know, do you think that's too much with the gnome or not? The floral is not on sale today, but you can still save 15% on that. So I hope this border is not going to be too busy with this gnome. So what I do is I'm going to move it up and you just, the pattern will match up again. You match it up and you tape it down and take it up just like that. And you could do this on any sign. And so I'm going to just go on up the border. And I'm just doing one coat. I'm not wanting it to be super dark or anything. Okay. And so you're going to match it. Just like so. Just like that. And you could do this with any sign, but I've done this on a lot of signs and I think it really adds something to your piece. And I'm offloading. You just have to look at the pattern, that's all. Because if you look, I'm going down this just a little bit because it was real light there. See how it matched up? And the same thing down here. I'm going to come down and I'm going to move a couple things there. And you just, there we go. It's matched up. You just move it around till it matches up. And it's the same thing. I'm just going to go down just like this. And I just thought this floral pattern would make him look, and I forgot, but you could flip him over. I like to do that a lot as well. You could flip this over just like this. So say, I don't knock all my paints over. Say you have it like this. Uh, let me line it up again. Okay, just like that, it was lined up. If you just simply flip your board like that, then you can go up your edges as well. And I love doing the edges of my signs. I think it adds a lot to it, just like that. So see? how that looks. Isn't that cool? And then up here we would just take it. Let's see. Uh, let me see where I had it. Is it like that? There we go. go right there to the edge and I'm just going to go whoop, see that's where I should have taped it down so let me see if I can get this back in place here just like that
just like that. It did not quite line up up here, but you can make it work. You can make it look the same. And then move it on down. See that one right there? And it's that easy. You just line your patterns up. And if you don't, you make it, you fudge it, you make it look a little um, like it fits. And then down here, I'm going to start like right, I think it's about middle there, roughly. And I'm just going to go up this border, just swirling away. And you just line your pattern up. And just move on up the board. I need to add a little bit more white to that. That is too light. But it's really easy. Have you ever done a border like that? Oh, I know. It's been a long one. I wanted to add this, though, to just to show you how you can add a little something to your borders. And the same thing. Just keep going right on up. And just line it up down here. I think I could actually even come down here and line it up to the bottom. And you can go over the sides and... And there's a couple of these different floral ones right here. Can you place the order number? The order number for this stencil is 8099, and the one I'm using is a medium. And so again, at the bottom, I'm just gonna kinda line it up. And you could do this on any, 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 any sign. It looks really pretty. Or this would be a really pretty background as well. And just, sometimes it's, there we go. Sometimes it's harder to line it up than anything. There we go. And then I've done a whole border. I don't know if you like that, but I thought it's something we could touch on today. So this is with the floral so this looks kind of, to me, this looks kind of retro, kind of hippie looking, this, um, this little guy. And then again, I'll probably go back later and you could bring it over the sides just like this. Looks beautiful. Looks really pretty and it's really easy. So do you, I mean, do you like them? I'm not sure about the beard. I just don't know. <laughs> Being brown, um, but I think he's so cute. He's just the cute, these gnomes are just beautiful. And then the code, thank you for sticking with me. I knew it was gonna be a long one. <laughs> Blooming genius, I, I love it, I'll take that. Oh, thank you, Judy, so much. Thank you, Kelly, I appreciate it, that. So remember today, this is the, the number 8769 that's on sale, this is the gnome. The size I used was an extra large. You can save with the code SIGNSHACK, S-I-G-N-S-H-C-K. You can save 15% off this already discounted 20% gnome. And then anything else in your order will be um, will be 20 or be 15 additional percent off. I'm sorry. I get a little uh, tongue-tied. But I know this was a long one today. Gnomes kind of do take a while. But once you, like I said, once you get the hang of it, um, it's really, 
it's really easy. It's just a puzzle. So we'll see you next week. I hope you have a great week and thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it so much. Have a great week. Bye-bye.